Hey guys, in this video, I'll be sharing with you my secret on how to achieve amazing color grading in Photoshop with few simple steps. And I'll show you everything from start to finish. We are first going to open our file in Photoshop. But before then, let me cancel this file. We are going to open our image in Photoshop. Click on open. Now go to the folder where your file is and then you open it in Photoshop. This image has opened right here in Camera Raw because this image is a raw file. So if you shoot a raw file, it's going to open in Camera Raw. But if you shoot a JPEG, it's going to open directly inside Photoshop. So we are going to make a few changes here and then go into Photoshop to continue our color grading process. The first thing we are going to do, we are going to change the color profile. To change the color profile, you just come to Profile here. Change this color profile from Adobe Neutral to Camera Standard. And with just this one step, you have taken this image from this flat looking image to this vibrant looking image. So it's a very important step in your color grading process. Don't forget to choose the correct color profile for your image. It's an awesome one click starting point for photo editing. Get creative with the different color profiles that you can apply to your image. And I recommend you try the camera matching, the camera matching here rather than the Adobe rolls because this one will give you the best color that your camera can give. But you are allowed to try out all the profiles and choose the one that works best for you. From there, we go to the white balance. This image already has a fairly good white balance. So just to get my signature look, I'm going to set the temperature to 4,500. And the tint, I'm going to set the tint to plus three. So anywhere from zero to plus 10, or zero to minus 10 is fairly neutral to get a correct white balance. And if you don't know if your white balance is okay or not, look at any area of your image that's supposed to be white and check if it's white. If it's having blue inside, it means your image is too cold. If it's having yellow inside the white, it means your image is too warm. So that means you are going to increase the temperature or reduce it depending if it's too cold or too warm. But most time, if you shoot with strobe or you shoot with a bright light, you are going to get a neutral white balance. And from there, we are going to just make few adjustments here in Camera Raw before we go into Photoshop to continue our color grading process. So you see, I increase the exposure a little bit because I'm going to reduce the highlight. By reducing the highlight, I'm bringing more details into the highlight. So I reduce the highlight like this, and then I reduce the black just minus 10. We did not make too much changes right now. After doing the processes in Photoshop, we still come back to Camera Raw to finalize everything. But for now, we just do these simple steps. So now we are going to click Open to open this image in Photoshop. So this is our image in Photoshop. First thing we do to this image, we are going to crop our image, but before cropping, we are going to straighten the image. To straighten, use the straighten tool, click on the straighten tool, and then you drag on an area of the image that's supposed to be horizontal, like this, and your image is going to get straightened. Now you use the correct aspect ratio for your image. For this image, you are going to be using four by five because you are going to be uploading this image to Instagram, now we we'll click on content aware field so that any part of the image that is uh, like this area right here, that is no field, that is empty, AI, Photoshop is going to use it AI to fill it. So now we we'll click on this icon right here, which is OK, and it's going to fill and give us our image well cropped out and straightened. So the next thing we are going to do before color grading, we are going to apply frequency separation to this image so that 
the skin can come out a little bit more pleasing and for this step we are going to use our healing brush to remove any pimples on the face just like this tiny pimples right under there we are going to use our healing brush too spot healing brush too for this image to remove any pimples if there's any pimples on our model skin and there's barely any pimples when you are done with that you are now going to apply the frequency pressure and for this image for images like this the route i take is to use my auto fix fx is an action that automatically fix my frequency separation issues it automatically apply frequency separation on my image just like this so let's take a look at the before and the after so here was the before applying it and here is the after here is before applying the frequency separation and here is the after you can see the effect is very subtle and the result is looking very professional look at her face here was the before applying the frequency separation and here is after applying the frequency separation you can see that it just goes into our image and does a great job automatically and if you don't want this effect all over the image just apply a layer max now press ctrl i or command i to remove this effect from all over the image and then use your brush foreground is white a soft brush if you want to confirm if your brush is white come here make sure it's soft round brush and i paint over the area i want to apply this effect just like this on the skin to review the effect so you can see with just one click we have applied frequency separation instead of using mixer brush normal brush or even the lasso tool to take our time especially for images like this we have two different people it's going to take a lot of time to fix their skin using the normal frequency separation and for this action you can check the link in the description to get it and to get it i encourage you to support the channel with just one dollar just one dollar you use to support this channel to get this frequency separation and don't worry i'll be giving you a free collaborating preset just to encourage you on this channel i'm going to give you a free collaborating preset link will also be in the description if you like to see more free collaborating preset uh, frequency separation actions and all that please like this video and leave a comment in the comment section highly appreciated so after applying frequency separation to our image the next thing we are going to do we are going to use the channel mixer to color grade our image so you come to your adjustment layer down here click on adjustment layer choose the channel mixer this channel mixer is going to come up and then we are going to use the channel mixer to adjust the colors in our image so the first output channel we are going to adjust is the green channel so in the green channel we are going to uh, remove the green in the green channel we are going to return it to zero and now we are going to add blue 100 just like this and you can see the before and the after you might feel the result is not pleasant right now but what we just did was to target this blue in the image all the blues here using just this setting we have changed it from this to this and now to better the reds in the image we are going to use the hue saturation adjustment in the hue saturation adjustment we are going to go to our reds and we are going to move the red like this plus 25 and the saturation we are going to reduce it we are going to reduce the saturation of the reds and now uh we adjust the hue again to get the color we are going for now here was the before and here's the after and now we are going to group these two together right here here was the before here's the after you can see how we've transformed the colors of this image with just these two adjustments by this point we are going to reduce the opacity to about 60 or 70 or thereabout here was the before and here's the after we are going the right direction and very soon you are going to see how beautiful this image is going to come out so after applying these settings we are going to now add a curve and now in the curve we are going to make a point right here 
And we are going to make another point right here. We are going to take this point up. Now we are going to take this point down like this, just a little bit like this, nothing too much. Uh, here was the before, here's the after. This is to add a little bit of contrast to the image. Here was the before and here is the after. So we apply this curve to our image. And now from there, we are going to apply another curve. But before applying this curve now, we are going to make a selection on our image over the area that we have the model standing, these two model. We are going to bring more focus to this model by creating a subtle spotlight. So after creating this circular shape around the model, the two models, we are going to come to our adjustment. We are going to create a curves, and now we are going to reduce the curves like this. And now we are going to come, click on this curve, and now press Ctrl I to invert the selection. Ctrl I on your PC keyboard. Uh, Ctrl in Mac is Command. So you press Command I if you are using a Mac. And now you can see it has a hard edge. To soften this edge, we are going to come right here to the properties if you are from the properties and you are seeing the curves just click on the layer on the layer max right here to bring up the layer max properties now you're going to feeder by dragging the feeder slider to the right like this and now this is now fadeed out and here was the before and here is the after we're going to change the blend mode from normal to luminous so that we don't change the colors that the curves have affected we're just going to affect only the luminance so here was the before and here is the after now from this stage we are going to sharpen our image so to sharpen the first step to sharpen this image you are going to create a stamp visible by pressing ctrl shift alternate e to create a stamp visible layer that is command option shift e on mac you press that to create a stamp visible layer and now we are going to go to our filter now we are going to go to sharpen smart sharpen and in smart sharpen we are going to use this amount of 250 uh, you can zoom into areas like the fish right here if you click on the preview you can see the before and the after this here's the before and here's the after so you click on ok and this image have been sharpened this is just the first step of sharpening and another thing we can do to this image is to shape the body of this model uh, from we shape this body right here this areas like this the model or your client is going to thank you if you do little changes like this that perfect their body shape so we are going to do that before going into camera roll to finalize the whole process so now on this layer we are going to go to filter now we are going to click on liquify now in the liquify we are going to liquify the body of the lady and before applying the liquify because right now we are going to use the forward warp tool to shape the body but if we try to shape the body right now you can see that the effect that we are trying to only apply to this area right here that we are trying to apply to just the curves of our body right here is going to affect even her arm which is not desirable so we are going to control z to undo that effect and now we are going to use the freeze max tool to paint over the areas we don't want the warp forward warp tool to affect so we are going to mark this areas out of the image so that right now if we take our forward warp tool and we make adjustment it's not going to affect the arms of this lady again so that is just exactly how to do it that's a very helpful tip use the freeze this tool right here is called the freeze max tool easy to max areas you don't want the liquefy effect to apply to and now we can adjust her body uh, we are not going to overdo anything so that the image doesn't look too photoshopped or unbelievable 
So we are just going to straighten her dress, those, those uh, puffs on her dress, those wrinkles on her dress right here. And now we are going to adjust like this. And this tiny area here, we are also going to adjust like this. And when we are okay, we can preview the before and the after. You can zoom out like this, preview the before and the after. You can see the after is way better. So when you are okay with the result, you click on okay, and this image will come back into Photoshop. So here was the before, and here is the after. To make the final color grading adjustment, we are going to go into filter, camera raw filter. So our image is going to be loaded into camera raw for the very last time. So now you can see that you can also load your JPEG into camera raw by using the filter camera raw option. So right now in camera raw, we can adjust the temperature once more, but this time is not to achieve white balance. This time is to give our image a mode. You can see that if you cool, that is, you reduce the temperature, it's going to give this image a cool vibe. And if you increase the temperature, it's going to give it a warm vibe. Both are right. Just depend on what you want or how you want your image to come out. But for me, for this image, I will want it a little bit warm. So plus 10 of warmth. And the tint also, you can use the tint to add magenta or add green to your image to give it a cinematic film look. For this image, I'm going to add a little bit of green right here into the tint. Now, we can also make adjustments in the basic adjustment section. Can add a little bit of exposure, a little bit of contrast. We increase the shadow a little bit to bring more details into areas that has the shadow. And once more, we increase the black. And then we add a little bit of texture clarity and the haze to bring more details into our image. That's why we are add, adding the texture, the clarity and the haze. And to see how it affects your image, you can zoom in like this. And when you make the changes, you see how it affects your image. But it's not advisable to go move these uh, sliders too much because it's going to destroy your image unless you know what you are doing. Now we are going to add a little bit of vibrance to boost the colors of the undersaturated colors in the image. To boost undersaturated colors, use the vibrance. Don't use the saturation because the saturation is going to add saturation to all colors equally. But the vibrance is going to add saturation to the undersaturated colors only. That's why we use vibrance instead of saturation. When you're okay with that, you can come to the details, add a little bit of sharpening once more. And if you zoom into this area, you can see that there's noise. So you reduce it a little bit, don't overdo this. And the color noise also reduce it a little bit, just like this. Now the color mixer is the section in camera raw that is very similar to the selective color in Photoshop. So you can make individual adjustment to your colors in the color mixer. Like the reds, you can add magenta to your reds or add green to your reds. But we've already almost got in the red we want. So we are just going to add a little bit of magenta to the red. Now, this selection right here is more targeted at just the red, not the orange. So you see the orange is where the skin tone lies. You can make your skin tone more red or also more magenta. It's going to affect the red also because it's red and orange. But the dominant orange is what is going to affect. So we are going to add a little bit of green to our orange as we add magenta to our red to separate the color of the dress from the color of the skin. So that is going to pop our skin out and make our image look more beautiful. If you are still watching this video and you've forgotten to like, please like the video right now and also subscribe if you are not a subscriber on this channel. Subscribe because we have lots more to teach you about photo editing in general. So this is the hue we've just adjusted. We can also adjust the saturation in the color mixer section. You can reduce the saturation of a particular color 
like the blue you can either increase the saturation or reduce it if there's blue you can see there's a little bit of blue here but uh there's more of cyan dice aquas in this area so you can see how it affects that area you can increase it to give this image a teal and orange look so we are going to increase it uh, like this plus 30 and also the blue are going to increase the blue then we desaturate the oranges just a little bit like this by watching this video you get a general sense of how to go about your own image and don't worry i'll be sharing a free preset with you also that might be of help or that will be of help if you have a similar image like i told you in a previous video there's no one preset that fits all so get presets different presets subscribe to this channel because i'll be putting out more presets so maybe but at the end of the day you have all the presets you need from different videos that i'll be posting to this channel so you get this preset that you can try if you have a similar image to this that contains red and blue so we are going to increase the saturation of the blue finally here but by increasing the saturation of the blue in the calibration we are increasing the saturation of the overall image because there's blue in the overall image just that it's more visible in areas that has more blue so if you see the histogram right here if you increase the saturation here you see that it affects the saturation of all the channel you can see the reds the green and the blue but we are not going to do anything too much so let's take a look at the before and the after here was the before and here's the after there's a lot of changes that we have made in camera roll to give this image this beautiful cinematic look so click on OK to bring our image back into Photoshop for the very final step. So finally, before exporting this image, we are going to target the black. So you create a selective color to target the black. We come to the colors and choose blacks. We are going to add a little bit of blue to the black so that we remove that green because there was excessive green in the black due to the adjustment we made in the camera roll. So we are going to add blue to the yellows by removing the yellow in the black we are going to add blue to our image and just to make it not look too red we are going to remove red from the cyan by adding cyan a little bit like this to get this effect here was the before here's the after there's a lot of changes that have been made to the image we chose this adjustment here was the before and here is the after so we can make also changes to the whites we can add blue to the white and add cyan so that we remove any warmth, excessive warmth in the image to get this result. So you can see here was the before of the image and here is the stage we are right now. So at this stage now we can flatten our image by right clicking and clicking on flatten. That's what I just did. Right click flatten image to flatten our image and we see this this image this model eyes open so we can actually whiten the eye also have an action for that if you need this action you let me know so we can whiten the eye these are just very minor fixes we can whiten the eye and remove any object we don't want like this room uh equipment right here you can remove it uh, but that is not necessary for this video right now but I actually removed it for my final image so right now we are just going to come to file save a copy now we are going to choose jpeg and click on save choose the quality level maximum high or medium the level you choose is going to determine the file size and the quality of the image so you right click on ok and the image will be saved onto your desktop so that's all we've done for this image, you can see for a recap, we first made adjustments in camera row, which the most adjustment being the color profile adjustment we did that brought vibrance into our image with just one click. And then we did very little basic adjustment before in camera row before bringing the image into Photoshop where we did frequency separation, adding contrast and adding color adjustments. And after that, we went back into camera roll to make final changes. Adjusted the black again, finally, in Photoshop 
before we did final exporting. Let me know your feedback in the comment section. Like, share, and subscribe. Happy to be part of your creative journey. See you in another amazing tutorial.